Okay, so we're going to start attempting to pull this head off. We'll start with the vacuum lines for the carburetor and the fuel line, and then eventually work into the uh, radiator hoses, heater hoses, anything that's associated with the head here. And the valve cover, the uh, valve, the rockers, and push rods. And then hopefully we will uh, then fire up the old air compressor and attempt to take the head bolts out. And then we'll really see what kind of angriness is in here. So a little background information. When you would crank this one up, which it would run like a, uh, like a Singer sewing machine, but it would uh, blow white steam looking stuff that was not blue and smell very much like an antifreeze or coolant leak. So I'm assuming that there is a massive issue somewhere between uh, some cylinders. Now the oil level, it's, or excuse me, the, the dipstick did not show any of the telltale chocolate nastiness uh, that would indicate water in the the oil but when you never uh, you never know so anyway we'll get at it sorry about me uh, rambling might have to fast forward some of this because I'm sure I forgot tools and this is you probably don't want to see me uh, do everything piece by piece I'm sure most of you can assume how this comes apart so anyway let's get on with it We'll start by pulling all this crazy fuel line stuff off here. There's like two fuel filters on it, which uh, is pretty good indication that somebody did not like the tank or what was in it. And judging by how the tank looked, and some of you've seen from the previous videos, that the the tank was glued back together with what looked like JB Weld, and it was all cracked and busted. And I actually did drain the fuel out of it so that it wouldn't get into the ground and it was really nasty looking inside so with the cracks to open to the to the air any water and dirt and nasty stuff could get in there and i'm sure the the previous owner or owners whoever had this this uh contraption before probably experienced some pretty rough issues with the carburetor so surprisingly it was running very well when we started working on it and taking it apart so here's one fuel filter. Notice the uh, the awesome uh, yeah green paint, and then it got a little too close to the spray bomb when it was being painted. We'll work on pulling off this this heater hose. Theoretically, I've drained it. I have a drain pan underneath it, but of course, as everybody knows that's ever worked with draining a radiator system. Your drain pan is never in the right spot and it always consequently ends all over the floor. So I'm sure that this will be the case as well. So I'm going to try and pre-position the drain pan in a little bit better spot. In reality, I'm just moving it so that it will make a bigger mess. All right, so theoretically that's in the right spot there. Hey, look at that, it came loose. Whoa, no way. Nothing came out. Sh shocking. Here comes the big one. Sorry about the wiggles. Surprised you didn't fall off. Let's see if we can use our screwdriver as a, uh, a freeing up device here. Oh yeah, that one's stuck in there pretty good. The best thing to use is a like a, a scribe with a hook on it. Those work out really, really well for digging up underneath there where that rubber has uh, seized itself or become one with the uh, with the whatever it's attached to, whether it's the radiator or the or the aluminum water neck here. So we'll probably run into the same. Be careful when prying on these because this is brass and it's probably original. So. That means that it's very susceptible to breakage or cracking or whatever. Ooh, look at that, it broke loose. But right there where that is brazed to the, the radiator is very susceptible to cracking. Wow, should really put a new hose on that one. Look at that, freedom. 
I don't think that this lower one, I think it's attached to the water pump. We're going to leave that dude alone. And But I will attempt to pull the uh, fuel line loose from the fuel pump just because I don't want it interfering with the with the head or the valve cover when we turn it off or take it off. So I'm sure that this is some ungodly tight and I should have a line wrench on it. But the line wrenches are over there. Yep, this one's going to fight. Say it isn't so. So in order to prevent a complete catastrophe, we'll try... Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice rounded off. This is a perfect advocate of why I use line wrenches on this. I see knuckle busting. Hey, look at that. Knuckle busting coming up. Uh, I guarantee that I'll forget to tighten that back up when we crank it. I'm sure the fan will let me know. We'll pull this makeshift vacuum line off of here. Bam. And then I will work on the valve cover. So luckily I've pre-positioned some of my tools here so that you don't see me doing the fast run to the toolbox every five minutes. Hopefully all of this will be fast forward and all you hear is blah, 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 because I'm rambling. Interesting enough, they put these tiny, tiny, tiny little screws. I think they do that on purpose so that when you drop them, they instantly run as far as and as fast as they can away from your work site so that you will never find them. Oh, that one was... Very, very loose. I'm sure that was a nice valve cover leak. Could be using air tools on all of this, but I'm not that smart. All right, so you're going to wiggle a little bit because I'm climbing up into the uh, scene here. So, so far everything has come loose, and I'm not just talking about the, the valve cover on this. Uh, the whole thing has been relatively easy. I'm sure anybody that's worked on an old vehicle can attest to that usually this stuff, especially those northern guys, I feel for you because I know that goes, is all crusted up with salt or, or uh, rust, and uh, really makes it hard for, for a fella to take this stuff apart. So I feel bad for you, uh, Vice Grip Garage, all those fellas up there that are in the north working on this stuff because it'll really fight you. It'll really try and let you know who's boss. I don't enjoy dealing with rust. Kind of why I live in Florida, not Minnesota anymore. That and the cold. Not a big fan of the cold either. Call me a whiner. Look at this one that they put way back here. How are you gonna get your fingers all the way back there to start that one? And where's it gonna go when you drop it? Some place you will never see again. It's that magical place like I've ref for reference below or before. Man, I can't talk to it. Uh, Narnia, where nuts and bolts and left socks and all those items go. And I bet it's wiggling pretty bad. Now I'm not sure, but I think we have to pull off these top ones too. So I'm going to have to, maybe I have the right socket up here. Oh, that one's double nutted. What's going on there? Let's see if we can get it off. Look at that. The whole thing just magically came loose. I've never pulled one of these Jeep or AMC or whatever valve covers off. This is a 73, so I don't know who made this motor. Uh, Chrysler or American Motors. Uh-oh, we may have to pause it. Bring you back. And we're back. I had to stop for a minute. Let's make sure everybody's still in the picture. And I bet this thing is really wiggling, so I apologize. I'm cr crawling around on the top of this. Again, hopefully it's all fast forwarded and all you hear is the gibberish. This one doesn't even want to come out, so I bet it. I bet it's just into a uh, 
baffle up in there. Let's make sure we haven't got any stragglers on our on our uh, valve cover bolts, and we'll we'll gently persuade this thing to come up with the uh, screwdriver. Look at that! It's going to come right off. Who knows what scary we're going to see in here? Ready? Ready? Oh, look at that! It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Let's look in the bottom of this. Look at that! Somebody's had that one apart. There isn't any nasty in there whatsoever. Big shocker there. I mean, even the valve cover gasket looks pretty decent. I think we could salvage that one. All right, I gotta make it wiggle again. I'm trying not to do that. All right, so the next step is to, let's say, pull the old uh, sparkulators off of the, uh, or the spark plug later wires off the spark plug later. I can't make them sound good. I should have probably numbered those. But that's why they put the firing order on the intake manifold for us dummies that don't do this. And then they're looking at that guy. Hey, I'm wiggling the whole spark plug. That's not supposed to happen. Well, I bet I can take that one all the way out. Ooh, that dude right there, pardon the dirt, he was about to push himself right out of there without any assistance whatsoever. And it would probably went ba-bang, and then went whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's going to make that noise, just like I did. Okay, interesting. So, we need to take the coal mount off. Now, it looks like something we can't get with a ratchet, of course. So... We'll try the ratchet anyway, because I'm that kind of a guy. Let's see. Ooh, sounds like the squirrels are busy on my roof. Let's see. Let's see if we can get in there on that one. I guess the right size. It, oh wow, did you see that? I scared it into submission. So evidently somebody's had that apart. I wonder if somebody's been in here before and uh, done some work and didn't do something correctly. You know, that never happens. Ever. Another thing I've learned in the past is you should keep track of these like little fastener devices because what'll happen is they will run off in between time of you putting taking it apart putting it back together because you know you do it so quickly and uh, you know you put it back together the very next day no it ends up being a month and these things will will travel all by themselves they just run off and hide and stop me I'm rambling again all right so the next one we can't get at with a uh, with a ratchet so maybe it's, look at that, that guy's loose too. Probably should have took, taken him out first because I gotta turn it with a wrench. Maybe I can turn it with my paws. Oh yeah, it's nice and gooey. I'm sure that'd have been a great ground back there. Yeah, work it all up into my, up under my fingernails. Yeah, I got all of it. Hopefully I'm not blocking the whole thing with my shoulder here. So we're just going to let that dude hang down there. And I'm going to do the right thing here and put these back in so I know where they go. Usually when you put them back in, now, you know what, I'm going to leave them out because if i got to take this head somewhere, and, well, obviously I have to take the head somewhere. They'll run off and I'll never see them again. Let's see, I bet those, those are not half inch. We're going to take the rocker shaft off so it's out of the way and don't, for those of you that don't know these are your push rods they ride off the cam and the and the uh, and the lifters down there in the bottom or the middle of I think it's down here from where the camshaft is and it's got a little high spot on a, and as it comes around 
it pushes these rods up and these things that just rock back and forth hence their name rockers will pop that valve open at supposedly just the right time to either a let fuel and air mixture in or b let exhaust out or c stay closed altogether so that if everything's in happy order and again in time that your piston can make compression and uh the sparkulators down here can go bang or make electric sparks and then bang and make things turn that's supposed to happen anyway that's on a good day oh look at that was loose. you should o o loosen these guys at uh in intervals so that obviously something is always going to be open or pushing or something at any given time because not everything moves exactly uh, in the, at the same time. So in other words, not everything is down. And each uh, piston and cha or a cylinder has a different firing time and position. So what that means is each, at any given time, these things can be in their different locations. So I don't want to loosen it all up. I don't want it all twisty, angry. So I loosened them up a little bit and I'll go through and uh, slowly take them loose like this so that it's not twisting theoretically. I think this motor is pretty robust and it could probably handle it, but we're trying to, to take care of it for the most part. So I think it's loose. Wow, that's a long-winded guy there. Man. So far, no breakage. I should have done this with a uh, an air wrench or an impact or something, and, and then we could have been probably done by now. But uh, as I've said before, I'm not that smart. One more and we can pull this whole shaft off and then we have to fight the exhaust so it's probably gonna make a liar out of me when I said things are coming loose pretty simple or on a, on a good or like they're supposed to yeah I cannot talk today so now if we got everything loose which you never do there's one fight gonna fight us this whole assemble I I should theoretically be able to go like this. Oh, look at that, and it came off. Oh, there went one upside down. Not that it makes a difference. So we're gonna fly this dude out of here. And set him over there. So now I have greasy paws. All right, what's the next step? Throttle, we already got the everything that's the nice thing about these old ones this is not a whole lot of extra garbage is attached to all over here you know on, on these newfangled engines you can't even see down here i can see the ground right now you try that on one of your new cars you probably can't even see the engine when you open up the hood but with that being said you probably don't have to do any maintenance on it in the first place so i guess i guess you win there all right we're going to go over to the other side and see what we can come up with So I got two exhauster bolts down here that hold the exhaust pipe up on the exhaust manifold. I'm going to leave the intake and the exhaust manifold on it and hopefully take it all off as a, as a unit and then we'll, we'll see where that goes, theoretically. So better grab my wrench because I can't get on them with a socket and let's just see how unfortunate this is going to go. Oh yeah, this is, I see big time fighting is going on here. I can't even find them. I think they're 916s instead of half. For those of you that don't speak standard and all you speak is uh, metric, that'd be like a 15 or so. Oof. We're going to have to use a, a sock. Well, let's see if we can get on this one. Whoa. 
let's use our our cheater method here there we go this has never caused any death so it's either going to break or round Oh, look, it came loose. Good thing I said something or that had never come loose. Wow, I'm thinking maybe somebody's been in here before. I see, am I going the right way? It's upside down, so I'd go clockwise, yep. Unless it's a left-handed thread. Whoa, wow, we're gonna use a ratchet on that one. We'll bring it back when I get that one apart and then we'll start because I have to start up the air compressor and that's going to make a lot of noise and you probably don't want to hear all that racket so I'll bring you back in a few minutes. Okay magic of YouTube we're back. I spoke a little too soon when I said everything's coming loose of course whenever you have to do or whenever you have to deal with the uh, exhauster pipes they always run into some kind of challenge so heading out the heavy artillery here with the uh, safety glasses and uh, luckily for me, I didn't have to resort to uh, the liquid wrench, but I did get the old circular saw here and uh, buzz off one of those exhaust studs because it was not cooperating properly. So we'll put him back. Thank you for your assistance. As always, you were awesome. We're going to get out the, uh, the air tools here. Hopefully the air compressor will stay silent for a little bit. And I had a three-quarter socket here somewhere that was my impact socket. Remember me telling you about things that run? Well, it evidently has run. So, where have you gone? It was right literally here before I started this back up. Okay. I'm sure one of you sees it. Yep, there it is. Look at that. In burrito there, disguised with the... Uh, the rest of the apparatus. Oh, let's pull those push rod tubes out before we get too rambunctious here. And uh, put them somewhere safe and sound so that we'll lose them in the future, like we did that socket just now. We'll put them inside here. Let's reach. Some of these are a little harder to get at than others. Should probably check them and see how bent they are as well. We'll roll them around and see what comes up. But like I said, it ran pretty good, but that isn't always the best indicator that something isn't happy. Wipe we'll off the pause one more time. We're dealing with uh, lots of power here, so let's put on the old glasses. This is, and uh, you know what? Ah, we'll get that later. We'll get the throttle cable in a minute. Let's see what happens. So, uh, as Musty One always says, noise alert. Hey, look at that. That one came out. That one. That one came out good.
after it's done, I'll put some. Oh wow, those have been on there a while. Hopefully my mug is right in the shot there. That one was happy to get out. We set it free. Ah, oh, I have to get a little short extension for that dude. And a deep socket for those. Law enforcement is down at the local intersection there, ripping people for going too fast. No complaints there, because people do go too fast. All right, that one's loose. We got two more. And then don't let me forget that throttle cable. So. Dang. I was gonna say something about bolts, but we'll wait till we get that last one out because uh, my luck hasn't been the greatest. Whoop, pulled the socket first. All right, so wigglers. Ugh. Another fun thing you can do is actually climb in this engine compartment. I'm gonna try to avoid that because when I fall down, everybody's gonna laugh. So. Let's get the maximum power. Oh, look at that. Okay, now I can say, well, at least I didn't break any of them. Because that's typically what happens when I say something is working as it should. I break something. So let's use our easy tool here to, to uh, pick up the speed of these coming out so I don't have to sit there and ratchet all day and everybody else is going good lord get it going already this is probably going to be death because uh, we all know what happens when you put swivels with impacts they come loose and then they come right back at you whoa look at that I got lucky oh, let's see if we can do this without dropping everything The key here is not to go uh, hog wild and uh, really hit the button hard. You just want to tease it a little bit. Like that and not explode them all. Let's get this thing out of here so that I don't inadvertently step on it and scare the snot out of me. You guys watch me jump all over and everybody laughs. So, unless I missed one. These things like tighten themselves back up all by themselves, especially when you go to lift the head off. See, there's one right there that would have done it. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Let's get the uh, the crazy looking throttle cable off of this thing. Of course, my screwdriver is on the other side. We'll get that. In case you can't see this custom, custom uh, throttle cable bracket, something, whatever. I'm, yeah, just gonna leave that right there. That's something we're gonna have to modify back to its original configuration because this is no bueno. This is pretty dumb. Oh man, so our throttle cable hold down our divisor craziness here is really really not not good at all we'll take them off the bottom here with our whenever anything comes closest to you it either becomes a hammer or a pry bar tool like this look at that he came off without too much fuss I have to get a pliers don't have said device close those little feet man they run And 
All right, all of my pliers, I have like 8,000 of these things, are all in 8,000 different locations, none of which are close, except for this one, which is in the box. So this should set itself free. We'll probably end up dropping this microscopic little nut here on the bottom. Maybe. And of course, they're long-winded. Maybe we can just gently persuade this guy out of there. Oh, look at that. We're going to replace that throttle cable, so I could have probably literally just done some uh, shortening of it, if you know what I mean, with a uh, set of wire cutters. But I learned in the past that if you do that, that'll end up being the only one in the world. And the one that you ordered for it is, of course, the wrong one. So we tend to shy away from removing items that way now. It scares me. Okay, so we remove the makeshift custom carburetor bracket, whatever thingamajob. And now, I guess, so we've got the exhaust loose. The water lines off, the rocker shaft out, the push rods out, the head bolts are all loose. The coil thingy is gone, unless there's a groundy thing on the back, which I don't see. We're going to leave the exhaust manifold and the intake manifold on there because they are a nightmare to take loose. Inside here, they hide all these bolts pretty successfully, or at least make them the most difficult you can possibly imagine to get on them with a socket. And being that they've dealt with heat, cold heat, cold heat, cold heat, cold they probably become a permanent fixture of the head or the exhaust manifold, one of the two. I'd like to mess with those when I have a little bit better uh, access. So we'll put a persuader or some type of a pry bar to kind of work it loose and break its original head gasket that's going to hold on for dear life. And uh, let's we'll see what happens. Of course, I don't have said, ooh, maybe we could use this pry bar right here. Or maybe not. Uh, most of you are screaming right now going, what the hell are you about to do? Whatever you do, don't do that. That would be disastrous. Let's see if we can just, well, look at that. She's already loose. Probably because it's already angry and blown up and mad or whatever. So probably what we'll do is I will uh, spare you the grunts and the groans and me blowing everything up in my back, lifting this million ton head off this thing. And uh, we'll bring you back when I get it off and we can get a bit of, b better look at both the block and the bottom of the head and see where the, uh, where the angriness is. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, the head is off. My God, this thing weighs more than the Jeep itself. There's our uh, tried to make us angry stud. And you can't quite see it, but there's a couple of spots that could be very suspect of where we're getting some water infiltrating into the combustion chamber. So there's another big nasty leak for the exhaust. It's got all kinds of fun that we're gonna have to fix up on it. And uh, here's what it looks like in the engine compartment, you know, where the head used to belong. So we definitely took the head off and we'll get it all pressure checked and probably I'll hone out the cylinders a little bit. And it's, a, it's not a race motor and we're not trying to make it brand new again. So this is more of a refresh. Remember what I said about cracking? Let's see, I'm going to put the light like that. That's definitely an angry spot on there that we may need to address as well. So. Anyway, it's a part. I need to clean up the mess and get this precariously balanced disaster uh, taken apart. Take all that heavy other stuff off there so it's a little bit more manageable and weighs slightly less than the rest of the Jeep does. Probably do something with this disaster here. Clean it all up and at least it'll look like it'll go faster. And we'll go from there. Okay, folks, so uh, we were successful with getting the head off and it's laying over here precariously balanced and I have to take care of all that stuff uh, and clean up my mess. So I plan on cleaning up all this disaster on the floor here because I've been saving all the wiring just in case I need something that uh, 
I threw away, which has happened in the past. And uh, it's Christmas again. So, uh, shoot, what else do we want to talk about? We got it all off. I got to get it in pressure checked. Uh, we'll take care of all that after. And thank you again for hanging out with Wrench and Maroa, watching all the crazy stuff that we do in here, and uh, more updates to follow. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.